All right. Hello, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Mushir Ahmed here. I'm doing my SRship in urology in Shamsha Medical College, Riva, in India. I'd like to present an unusual case of that of an unusual self inserted foreign body, an entire pencil, a male urethra, and a bladder, and its management. Coming to introduction, the lower urinary tract foreign bodies are rare. These are commonly inserted secondary out of curiosity. It could be hydrogenic or from, or, or for autotrotic simulation. The materials inserted vary from wires, batteries, screws, pens, to weird ones, including animals, with a snake being an example. The clinical presentation varies. It's typically delayed because of the embarrassment that the patient faces at the clinic. In most cases, nonetheless, the inserted foreign body results in extreme pain, urinary tract infections, and symptoms of hematuria. Techniques employed in the extraction of these foreign bodies have to be simple and should cause no undue trauma to the urethra and the bladder. In spite of the presence of comparable literature, the case that we discuss here is of that of an entire pencil in toto as urethral and bladder as a foreign body is a rarity. In the case presentation proper, it is that of a 21 year old male that presented to the emergency department with complaints of a protrusion from his cranium and was in pain as well as had dysuria. A detailed history revealed that he had self inserted an approximately 15 centimeter long pencil with the blunt end inwards about six hours prior to the presentation for autoerotic stimulation. No further history of any previous psychiatric disorder, but he had previously also performed a similar act about three to four times over a period of the last three months using the same pencil. Going to the clinical examination, one end of the foreign body was clearly visible and palpable in the perineum, in the posterior urethra, as can be seen on the left picture. On clinical examination, it was palpable in the bladder as well. A pain radiograph was done, and it did not reveal a clear cut or well demarcated foreign body, as can be seen here. We proceeded to, after doing that workup towards a diagnostic cystoscopy, uh, it, which was done under spinal anesthesia, which revealed that the anterior urethra had no strictures or narrowing or any mucosal injury due to the insertion. The foreign body was found lodged in the membranous urethra, extending proximally via the prostatic urethra through the external as well as internal splinters into the bladder. Both the urethric orifices were noted to be normal and the bladder wall was intact. Here is a video of the diagnostic cystoscopy performed as I'll be explaining it. Entering, in, entering through the penile urethra, primary vein, proceeding towards the membranous urethra, you can see the foreign body lodged in there. As we're trying um, navigating through the prostatic through the prostatic urethra into the bladder, action is given using the cystoscope on the foreign body. And the prostate surrounding the foreign body, moving towards the internal splinter. And the bladder is entered. Which, uh, there, uh, there was no detention of the abdomen, which proved that the bladder wall was intact. The bladder swelling was seen on clinical examination as well, and uh, is seen completely lost in the dome of the, the dome of the bladder. Internal orifices were normal. Under the treatment aspect, endoscopic extraction where the urethra seemed impossible and open suprapubic trans with cycle extraction of the entire pencil was done successfully. The bladder was repaired in a standard fashion. Peritral silicon catheter and a suprapubic catheter along with a drain in the space of radius was placed. The drain was removed on post op day three prior to discharge and in subsequent follow-ups, the urethral and the suprapubic catheters were removed as well. Here's some of the intraoperative findings. After making the incision, uh, we proceeded over uh, to do a cyst uh, cystostomy and uh, mobilization 
of the foreign body intracystic is uh, done on table as seen. There is a snugly in fit to the top of the bladder. Finally, the foreign body is extracted. That's the entire pencil from the lower urinary tract extract. This is the foreign body at around 50 centi 15 centimeter measured. And post shows uh, approximately 1.5 centimeter incision that was repaired in layers with a drain uh, in the space of radius. The 16 French catheter placed uh, suprapubic, suprapubically for drainage. There was a periurethral catheter placed as well. I mean, the discussion point of the presentation. Cases of uh, the causes of foreign body in lower urinary tract include psychological, hydrogenic during uro urological procedures, such as during the opening of the loop uh, being broken and floating around, a traumatic aspect, and migration from other organs. In psychological aspect, various circumstances, including exotic impulse, uh, mental illnesses, borderline personality disorder, sexual uh, curiosity, sexual practice while in talk and so on result in self-insertion of the foreign bodies into the lower urinary tract. Most common motive among these is found to be sexual or erotic in nature. Various options that are reported for the treatment of such foreign bodies in the urinary bladder, for example, include endoscopy, laparoscopic removal, percutaneous removal, radiological, and open surgery. In some cases, a combination of these techniques is used. Ultimately, the availability of surgical instruments, uh, the urologist's experience plays an important role. The urethral foreign bodies that are inserted via the urethral orifice usually migrate into the bladder by being pushed further into the urethra during the process of removing them by the patient himself or by the involuntary pineal muscle contraction. The success rate of the endoscopic management is high. But open procedures become inevitable in certain cases with pineal urethrostomy or suprapubic cystostomy as done in our case, being the other options available, depending upon the type and nature of the foreign body. In our case, the foreign body, a pencil was impacted in the urethra and the bladder and could not be retrieved by cystoscopic maneuvers. Open cystostomy, open cystostomy was done upon in order to access and retrieve the pencil thus avoiding bladder or urethral injury. With palm diagnosis into the inference, uh, with palm diagnosis and accurate management, lower unit tract foreign bodies can be removed successfully, but uh, complications such as stone or fistula formation and infections do occur if the foreign bodies remain intact for extended duration of the time. Certain case reports have also documented complications as extreme as sepsis and uremia resulting in the death of the patient. Finally, patients are advised for, for psychiatric evaluation, but our patient in this case refused the consultation. In conclusion, this particular case of ours highlighted the presentation, the possible management protocols and the definitive treatment that was given in such a rare clinical scenario. The treatment approach is crucial in such cases, which not only includes the prevention of further injury to the urethra and bladder, infection prevention, monitoring the delayed complications, but also the complete psychological evaluation of the patient present with, to prevent certain, to prevent such episodes in the future. Sorry. There are some of the references that I've used. Thank you.